In this video I want to show you 8 ways to reduce inflammation naturally. So why should you care about inflammation? Scientific research shows us that every modern disease is linked to chronic inflammation, ranging from heart diseases over diabetes to even cancer, and also conditions we wouldn't necessarily connect with it, like our mood, joint pain, chronic fatigue, or brain fog can be caused by chronic inflammation. Keeping your inflammation levels low might also help you to fight infections more efficiently, since your immune system is not preoccupied with other things. Even if you're healthy, but you have trouble to lose the extra 5 pounds of belly fat, it is fair to blame inflammation for it, as it stimulates fat gain. This brings me to the first way on how to reduce inflammation, which is to lose some body fat. Overweight people have generally higher levels of inflammation, and fat cells can actually secrete inflammatory molecules. Studies have also shown that losing weight will lower inflammation. Ok, but what if inflammation is the reason you can't lose weight? Well, there are still 7 other methods on how to reduce inflammation naturally, so let's move on. For many people inflammation starts in the gut. In fact, about 70% of our immune system is associated with the GI tract. The microbes in our gut can produce molecules that interact with our immune cells and either calm them down or stimulate inflammation. A good example here is the short chain fatty acid butyrate, which is produced when fibers fermented in the gut. Butyrate stimulates the production of regulatory T cells, which then help to dampen unnecessary inflammation. Another important factor to consider here is a condition called leaky gut. If the gut cell wall becomes permeable, certain toxins or even microbes can rush into the body's circulation, where they cause inflammation. Gut health is a complex topic, but a good rule of thumb would be to stick to natural foods and cut out anything that is processed. This brings me to my next point on how to lower inflammation naturally, which is to eliminate processed food. We all know that those delicious things like pizza and Oreos aren't good for us. And most people think that it is because they have so many calories. Which is true, but that's not the end of the story. Researchers showed that common food additives affect the microbiome and induce inflammation in the gut. Let's cut this short and say that if you see something that contains as one of the first ingredients sugar and soon after ingredients like canola oil or artificial flavors, you might want to save it for a special day instead of having it every day. Generally speaking, sugar and refined carbs can contribute to inflammation, and many people would be well advised to adapt a low carb diet for reducing inflammation. Researchers have recently figured out how sugar is metabolized in the body, and they found that consumption of sugar can lead to an overload of fructose in the liver that then stimulates inflammation. And low carb diets like the Mediterranean diet or the keto diet have been shown to reduce inflammation significantly, at least compared to low fat high carbohydrate diets. However, the quality of the fat matters extremely. Vegetable oils such as corn oil or sunflower oil are very susceptible to oxidation, producing free radicals that then stimulate inflammation. Vegetable oils are also extremely high in omega-6 fatty acids and low in omega-3, which further increases inflammation. Sometimes it might even help to not eat for a while. I know it sounds scary and many of us have learned that eating many small meals throughout the day is good for our health. However, it turns out it's exactly the opposite. Fasting and eating only a few big meals has been shown to be anti-inflammatory. Fasting also seems to be good for the gut microbiome. Animal and human studies alike show how fasting stimulates the production of short-chain fatty acids and reduce inflammation in the gut. Another diet-unrelated approach to lower inflammation would be via exercise or heat and cold exposure. Exercise and heat exposure, such as sauna, first lead to a temporary increase in inflammation. But once the stress for the body is over, the inflammation levels not only go back to baseline, but are further reduced. Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks at the Heart Summit 2019 about the benefits of frequent sauna use. And one mechanism that explains why sauna shows all these benefits is because it lowers inflammation. And the sauna has been consistently shown to lower, for example, C-reactive protein in a dose-dependent manner. So the more frequent the sauna bathing, the more uh, longer the duration, the more robust in terms of lowering C-reactive protein. It's also been shown to increase uh, anti-inflammatory biomarkers like IL-10. Cold exposure can also potentially reduce inflammation. 
For such an experiment, a group of healthy volunteers were trained by the famous Wim Hof, aka the Iceman. The training included breathing techniques and meditations, as well as cold exposure, including climbing a snow-covered mountain wearing nothing but shorts. After a 10 days training camp, the trained group and an untrained control group were injected with an endotoxin. And usually this endotoxin causes fever for several hours. And indeed, the control group developed a strong inflammatory response and flu-like symptoms. However, the trained group showed fewer symptoms and a much stronger anti-inflammatory response. The experiment was eventually published in one of the best scientific journals. So, getting trained by the Iceman is scientifically proven to be anti-inflammatory. At least, if you survive the training. And survive from a 10 minutes ice bath. Okay, moving forward on how to reduce inflammation naturally, we also have to talk about stress. We know that stress is not good for our mental health. And this is most likely because it increases inflammation. When people underwent the so-called TRIA social stress test, the inflammation levels increased. And this was especially true for people with major depression. So while short term stress isn't the issue, chronic stress can lead to chronic inflammation, which then wreaks havoc in your body. There are many foods and spices that seem to be anti-inflammatory. And I will make a separate video for that, if this video gets 100 likes. But here is already a short list of anti-inflammatory foods, which includes all kinds of berries, fatty fish, cruciferous vegetables, avocados, dark chocolate and olive oil, to just name a few. When it comes down to the spices, things like turmeric or ginger seem to have anti-inflammatory properties. Other important immune system regulators are specific micronutrients like selenium, magnesium, zinc and vitamin D. But again, I will make a more detailed video about this if this video gets enough likes. CBD oil is another thing that can't be missing in a video that talks about inflammation. But that topic would clearly exceed the content of this video and I would rather discuss it in an unbiased manner in another video in much more detail. That's it, these are the scientifically proven methods to reduce inflammation. I will leave a link to the references in the description. Consider subscribing to learn more about inflammation in different videos. Also, here's a video where I fasted for 3 days, which is, as we just have learned, anti-inflammatory. And YouTube thinks that you might like this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.